Hello, this is Stan Stalnaker with Hub Culture, and we're at the World Climate Summit in Durban, South Africa, against the backdrop of COP17. Currently, I'm with Nianta Spellman, who's with Rainforest Partnership. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So, Rainforest Partnership, we're an international nonprofit organization. We work with rainforest communities, helping them make an income that allows them to protect the forests. That simple, very bottom up. You know, what do the communities want to do differently from what they're doing? Um, very bottom up in the sense that, you know, what's the culture, what are the opportunities in the forest they're living in? How do they want to do different, something differently? How can they, we help them do that? So this is, um, this is a global uh, project around rainforest or it's focused on the Amazon? So currently, uh, we're just about to be four years old. We are working in the Amazon, Ecuador and Peru. And eventually, yes, we'll be in Africa and Asia. We will be global. Uh, Little helicopter there. <laughs> um, so, okay, so you're working in Amazon and Peru. And, um, and Ecuador. And Ecuador, okay. And so, tell me, walk me through the process. Like, how do you, do you actually go into the rainforest and you yes. sit there and do you help them figure out, like, maybe a product that they can do that is sustainable? So, it's product or service. And so, each of our projects, we have three right now, uh, three communities that we work with. And each of them, um, the uh, project is based around a different product. Um, we created a management plan around, uh, um, sustainably and legally harvesting this palm fiber that's used to make brooms. Uh, we, uh, so thereby actually protecting the 9,000 acres, which is about 14 square miles. We've worked with two uh, women's groups to help them create artisan products. Mm -hmm. And we're working with a third community that's uh, in a cloud forest community in central Peru. And that's eco, very basic ecotourism uh, in a place where nobody else is working. A lot of deforestation further down, um, lowland so rainforest. So trying to like stop that, put a line in the sand, and, and it's create a different that. economic model, right? Yes, and so it. the community wanted to do that. The community saw that there was a lot of deforestation, that they wanted to do something differently. So they actually stopped cutting the forests, their trees down. They actually stopped the taking of butterflies and birds and orchids. Uh, and this was the opportunity because what they have is an incredibly biodiverse area with wonderful accessible waterfalls and a uh, lot of uh, uh, birding that are, uh, birds that are endemic to the area. So across the rainforest, um, you know, I think the average viewer would think of the rainforest as being this almost impenetrable um, kind of wall and you go very deep into it and it's really just the jungle and the wildlife. But it seems like these indigenous communities are very much a part of the fabric of the forest. Is that true? It is. And yes, I'm dressed like this, but I am about as comfortable sleeping on the floor in somebody's uh, home in the middle of the jungle. And it's, it's terrific to walk in and this vegetarian, I'm a vegetarian now, I would eat a roasted grub. I, I would not eat a primate, uh, but you know, it's, it's uh, the communities know how to live sustainably with the forest and they want to protect what's been uh, part of their lives all their lives. I mean, they think of themselves as, as being one with the forest, a lot of these indigenous communities, and they're not so impenetrable. In fact, that's a myth. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about the, um, the economics of this sort of stuff. How, how does uh, Rainforest Partnership fund these projects and how are you looking to scale what you're doing so that it can help more people? Yes, so uh, we've done it so far with uh, mostly from donations from individuals and we've had uh, small, smaller levels of uh, corporate partnerships and small foundations and so this is the year we're actually uh, transitioning to actually creating larger partnerships. We've uh, created this working model that really works, working on the ground with successes um, showing that folks can make a sustainable income. It's about, you know, long-term sustainability, both economic and ecological, mm -hmm. so that the people can make the income and at the same time protect the forest because the income source is actually tied to the forest and the forest being protected. Yeah, so creating an economic incentive attached And so we're now inviting people to, to come join us and join these communities and helping them do that. And there's various different ways of doing that. Um, and, and people find you at rainforest. Rainforestpartnership.org is okay. where we can be found, and we're on Facebook and Twitter, of course. Okay, um, so people can get involved. And are there specific new projects that you guys are looking to try and create? Um, yes, we are, and so we have at least three new projects that we're looking at. Um, very wonderful uh, products. Um, 
just as we have handicrafts, ecotourism, and, and the brooms uh, from the palm fibers, we have honey, uh, essential oils, and uh, ecotourism that's actually focused on the local uh, population uh, that we're looking at. And so, uh, again, these are opportunities uh, for folks who may want to come in. So a company that wants to do product development, wants to fund product development, be, but also be the market, um, that's the other way we're looking at it as well. So a couple of potential partnerships we're looking at is right. just like that. Excellent. Okay. Well, once again, this is Stan Stalmaker at the World Climate Summit. I'm with Nianta from the Rainforest Part Partnership and once again in sunny Durban at COP17. Thanks so much and good luck with your project. It sounds like you guys are doing great work. Thank you. Thanks.